I'm kind of risk averse in some ways. Like I don't driving fa- like driving fast in cars because I was driving very carefully here because the roads are bad. Yeah. And then I was thinking, but I'm very like pro risk in other ways, like being really exposed to like a wide variety of people who might hate you. And uh, I think like from the outside that might look fine, but I think the monkey brain is really sensitive to lots of people yelling at you for whatever problems that you seem to have. That so that's think. the big risk you're taking is putting yourself out there as an intellectual, like through your writing. And then a lot of people yelling at you. Is that is that the yeah. worst embarrassment you can it's experience? It's pretty bad, yeah. I think I think the worst embarrassment is if I put something out there that I failed to like be properly skeptical of in myself. Sure. And then people are like, oh, we caught this thing that you didn't catch. I think that's the biggest terror. Yeah, from looking at your reading and listening to your interviews, you seem to be very defensive and worried about being a good scientist. Yeah, definitely. About your like methodology. Yes. <laughs> And funny enough, you get attacked on that methodology, even though, you know, I've, I'm a fan of psychology, I like uh, the academic psychology, and it's it's kind of disappointing often how non-rigorous mm. their work is, how small the sample size and so on, and, and how big and ambitious, over-ambitious the, the proclamations about results is, mm. especially when the news reports on it. Now you're both the researcher, the scientist, and the reporter, mm-hmm. right? So like that's what you have with the blog. Your sample size is often gigantic. The methodology is right there. The data is right there. You provide the data, mm-hmm. and then you're like raw and honest with your interpretation of the data. Like there's an honesty, authenticity to it. So I don't. It's actually really refreshing. I don't know why people criticize it. I think this is what pe- this is what psychologists are probably terrified about being transparent and transparent in that way is because they'll get attacked for their methodology. So they wanna cloak it mm. in a um, you know, sort of layer of authority. Like I'm from this institution, it was peer reviewed, this kind of all these layers, and I'm also not gonna share the data with you, and I'm also gonna pretend like most psychology studies are not replicable. I'm just going to pretend yeah. there's authority to it. I think it works on a lot of people. Like from the outside, you're like, ah, the scientists with the white lab coats with credentials. Those are the people who are like doing science. And like doing science is, you know, you have like fancy terms that other people are not, don't really understand. And to be fair, like I I have a lot to learn. I'm still like, I'm self-teaching. I'm like learning through people, learning as I go. I'm definitely not super knowledgeable about this stuff. Um, but a lot of what those people are doing in science is not that hard, Um and a lot of people like don't try to learn it because it seems so like elevated. And this is one thing that really bothers me. I think like everybody can do science. Like if you just have this aspect of curiosity and like you just really want to figure something out, you can go and start, you know, asking people questions, doing surveys, like writing down the answers. And then you can go learn how to look at that data in a way that gives you more information about the world. Like it's very simple and straightforward if you just approach it humbly and earnestly and you're like, please, let's like let's figure this out together. But people like are, I think, self-crippled in this because uh, they view this as like relegated to the domain of the experts and, you know, the fancy scientists. And I think that makes me feel really sad. You're almost attracted to the questions you're not supposed to ask. Oh yeah. Also, yes. (laughs) Which might contribute to the controversy. Not exclusively, probably. Oh no. But you're just not uh, limited by like part of your curiosity is asking questions that seem common sense. Like what, some of the most controversial questions are like around sex. Mm-hmm. It's like everybody thinks and talks and does sex. I mean, it's, it's the driver of human civilization. And yet there's so little like rigorous discussion about the like the philosophical and the scientific questions around it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it gets really weird to, to be able to discuss them. It's, it becomes tricky to discuss them. Yeah, it's super charged, super, because everybody has a really strong opinion, like whether or not, you know, pornography is damaging to society or like how sex corresponds to gender or like what kind of sexuality is acceptable. Like, do, can you have sexual preferences that in them, in themselves are immoral? Uh, people get very angry about it. Well, the sad part is they're not just opinionated, but most of us, our relationship with sex is, uh, I think, I guess I want to say not rigorous. I think it's very difficult to be rigorous about sex. Like, it, I I would consider uh, 
sexual urges to be kind of elusive to introspection in a way that's a little bit disproportionate to a lot of other things. Sure. Like you could like, you know, introspect about, you know, how I want other people to like me and um, how, where my insecurities lie. But sex is one of those black box things. A really common thing is for people to, if you have a fetish, you sort of check back in your childhood to see an event that corresponds to that fetish. And then you like develop a narrative like, ah, this event in my childhood must have caused this fetish. And so I think this causes people to be biased towards like a, like a concrete, coherent causative way that events happen or there's that sexual fetishes happen um this is just like one example of like why i think it's really hard to be rigorous with introspection because we can't avoid you, you just want to tend towards making like coherent narratives which i think is not always the correct way to explain it